And it's something that I've struggled with. So I want to meet other women so that we don't beat up on ourselves so much. And because when we do that, I think it affects everything that we do. And I really, in the position that I have, um, I really feel that I'm changing lives every day. But if I'm not the best per, the version of me, then I don't think I can be the best for, you know, the the clients and the students and the and all the people that I work with. Uh, so that's really what I focus on. And um, and I think by focusing on that it just makes me a better person a better coach a better wife a better overall individual welcome to jane jackson careers a podcast that takes your career to the next level here's your host jane jackson author of amazon careers bestseller navigating career crossroads Welcome back to Your Career Podcast. Now, I'm really excited today. Well, actually, I'm always excited about my guests on Your Career Podcast. But honestly, today I have a LinkedIn superwoman. And yes, she even has a cape. And she's from Toronto, Ontario in Canada. Shelley Elsliger is an engaging LinkedIn trainer and president of Linked Express. She coaches executives, diverse leaders, aspiring women leaders, business students and job seekers, as well as corporate teams inspiring them to maximize their professional branding potential and their social influence on LinkedIn. Shelley is recognized as a woman you need to know by the National Women Speakers Association and a woman of achievement. She's made it to the list of globally recognized LinkedIn training experts. Her diverse experience allows her to bring a unique breadth of knowledge as well as an aspect of fun and passion to all her workshops and speaking engagements. LinkedIn in high heels, rise up and lead online is one of her favorite keynote speakers and it's her signature workshop aimed at helping women business leaders successfully rise up, own their space and find their voice online. Her motto is, instead of waiting to be noticed first, be a leader in your space. Lean in, listen in and link in. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me, Jane. Oh, you know what, Shelley, since we met on LinkedIn about two years ago, I've wanted to get to know you better. And um, just through all of your posts, and we support each other so much that it makes sense for us to have a podcast interview. And I can't wait to hear all about your career journey as well. So as, as you know, this, this podcast is all about career transition and supporting people through transition. So how about to kick us off? Let's find out about your early days and what you wanted to be when you were a little girl. So what I wanted to be when I was a little girl was a veterinarian <laughs> That was in my early days, but I'm a big animal lover. So that has continued, but more as a hobby. And then I guess I went into teaching, but not so, I thought I would be a good teacher, but more, the reason I guess I got into teaching was more because all of my family was in teaching. My uncle was my principal, you know, I had at least three aunts who were, um, teachers and professors and that's all I heard all the time so I said well maybe then I just have to go into teaching and I got into teaching but um, I guess in 2010 I became a coach and that changed my life I think everybody should <laughs> should take coaching but I became a coach and at that point I realized that there was something missing that even though I was a teacher and I was creating a lot of change. I really wanted to become a career coach. And I and I was already in career coaching at the, by that time. But I wanted to take it to a new level. I wanted to do something where I could empower people. And uh, I found my voice online. So it's kind of funny how I my voice, I actually found my voice again online. And then that transferred on to offline. And I was able to use LinkedIn as a way to empower uh, many different kinds of people and professionals. Mm. So that's a little bit of my background, and that's where I am today. Yeah, and and you are so visible on LinkedIn. It's amazing. I mean, both of us are LinkedIn trainers, and we both love LinkedIn so much. But you've had such an interesting career journey because, obviously, I've been researching you, stalking you, Shelley, <laughs> and 
in the early days, you were now with the teaching that that was a very a big part of your life. Yes. And you were an English professor um, and then you became a career advisor, author and blogger. Now, I found this really interesting. A blogger for the Montreal dog blog. Now, you mentioned you're an animal lover and I'm I'm a crazy cat lady and animal lover as well. I've had cats and dogs and hamsters and, and fish and birds and all sorts of things in my life. And currently I've got two cats. In fact, one new one today. <laughs> I just told you about earlier. But but tell me a little bit about this switch over from being an English professor into career advising, then becoming an author, and then blogging for the Montreal Dog Blog. And I really want to hear about that for a little while, because that sounds really, really fun, especially for all the animal lovers out there as well. Um, the Montreal Dog Blog was an amazing opportunity for me. Uh, Nat Lozo, this was her brainchild. She's actually, um, uh, she works on the radio and big animal lover too. And we had had the chance to meet at several different dog events or pet events. I think we both like all animals. And uh, she was telling me about this initiative that she was going to come up with. And I said, listen, if it, you know, if it happens, you have to um, make sure you don't forget about me. And she said, I wouldn't forget about you. And um, then all of a sudden it, it happened. Uh, sponsors came along and she was lucky enough to um, create this Montreal dog blog. And it was really about bringing community together and highlighting what all of the good things that were happening um, in the city and where people could go for resources. And there's a, there was a big uh, push for, um, you know, adopt, not shop. And I, um, you know, with two rescues and, well, I've had four at one point, um, I know what it's like to have people who are who can support me and hope to have those resources around because it's easy enough to find a breeder, but it's not sometimes not easy enough to find um, a place where you can actually find a dog that's still a fit, but a rescue at the same time. So we started the blog and um, I was doing everything from, you know, green, how to how to have a green and sustainable lifestyle with a dog to anywhere from, you know, having my uh, showcasing my dog and I going out and picking up garbage along the way. <laughs> and uh, I really got into um, to that and I usually blogged about once a month or even more, I guess, whenever I was inspired, I would sit down and write and realize that that was my way to give back to the, to the dog community and to the, the pet parents, the fur baby parents, who I think are awesome. <laughs> yes, I know. I'm one of the fur baby parents and I have, I have two rescue cats now. And I, I 100% agree, rescue an animal rather than, than breed an animal because there are so many out there who need so much love. And so I think that shows what a big heart you have as well, Shelley. And thanks for telling, telling me about that because when I saw that on your profile, I thought, oh, I must find out about the Montreal Dog Blog. And I love it that you're actually into quite a lot of different things and, and uh, wellness, nutrition, well being is also a very important part of your life, isn't it? Yes, I've uh, done quite a few workshops with other women, um, you know, around body shaming and around, you know, appreciating what you have and um, really wellness overall. And, uh, you know, being a community of women with different body shapes and different um, possibilities for you know wellness around you whether it's going to the gym or whether it's going for a walk so I tried to actually build communities so people would not so the women in my group would not feel so alone and so I got everybody together and whether you know we were doing all kinds of things from walking to talking to just about sharing resources on what was going around in the city and and helping each other realize that we don't have to go to a gym if we don't want to go to a gym there's other things that we can do so we tried to kind of just come up with the idea that we don't have to be pushed into things and decide on things that no that don't necessarily fit our lifestyle but to find things that we love to do Mm. I wish you weren't so far away in Toronto <laughs> because because we could we could go power walking and get a group together here in Sydney as well. I mean we're half a world away, uh, but but it really is so important. It sounds like that that is um, a, a community group where you're really supporting women to appreciate themselves for who they are. Is that right? Yes, and I mean it's something that I've struggled with. So I want to meet other 
women so that we don't beat up on ourselves so much. And because when we do that, I think it affects everything that we do. And I really, in the position that I have, um, I really feel that I'm changing lives every day. But if I'm not the best version of me, then I don't think I can be the best for, you know, the, the clients and the students and the, and all the people that I work with. Uh, so that's really what I focus on. And, um, and I think by focusing on that, it just makes me a better person, a better coach, a better wife, a better overall individual. Mm. You know, what, what comes through when, when I look at your career journey as well, what, what comes through really strongly is you, you are very dedicated to a passion or a cause and helping others is so important for you as well. And not, not just um, business people, but, you know, women in the community, animals in the community. And I really, I really love that because I also have a very helping um, desire just to make that little bit of a difference to somebody's life uh, so that, um, you can really help them to excel. And this is what you do. Now, you are known, Shelley, as the LinkedIn superwoman. And I happen to know that you also have a cape. (laughs) I've seen seen you posting pictures of the cape. And also, there is an interesting story about a red shoe. So tell me about that LinkedIn superwoman and the red shoe and how all of this came about. I don't have my cape. I guess I could have worn it, but I do have the red shoe right here. And this is beautiful. My, um, yes, this is a patent leather red shoe that has great significance. Yes. Um, the red shoe I received when I was 13. So um, I was, I guess it was my first national public speaking contest. And uh, it was actually the first time I got a pair of high heels. So I was pretty excited because my mother said, what would you like to have? You know, you want a new outfit. You want to, you know, you're going to be going on stage. And and it was the first time it was going to be held at my high school. So I said, yes, I need a red pair of shoes. And um, so that my mother got me these amazing red shoes. And I stepped onto the stage and I was just about to, um, you know, go into my speech, which was on empathy, actually. And it was called um, Stepping in Somebody Else's Shoes. Mm. And I was like 13. I had just turned 13. And I was just about to start my, you know, speech on empathy. And um, my bully, uh, you know, yelled out something. Well, yelled out, you know, um, (laughs) something around you know my weight and I remember that I just um I just stood still I couldn't do anything I just looked out into the audience and realized that uh I just forgot everything that I was going to say and actually didn't want to say anything so I ran off the stage and as I was running off the stage my left shoe um kind of like they were a little bit big and my left shoe kind of like slid from underneath me and it went wherever and I just ran out with my red shoe in hand and went back to the classroom which was in the back dressed ran out of the school ran home because I lived in a little village of a thousand people so you could get anywhere by foot and I walked in the door and I said I'll never speak again and I'll never wear high heels again. So, um, but I'm a big believer in how um, we have to say yes to hardships. And it was a hardship, but I, every time I look at this shoe, it reminds me of how far I've come. And it it reminds me that I can get through anything. And we are all going to have those times in our lives that are not so pleasant, but we can get through adversity and we can actually use those moments like that moment being on stage and never thinking I would speak again actually led me to where I am today, doing all kinds of speaking engagements, uh, um, especially LinkedIn and high heels for women (laughs) business leaders. So uh, I would never have found that um, and I would never be making the difference I am making for, uh, for women if I hadn't gone through that experience. Mm, And I'm glad that you have this LinkedIn in high heels uh, 
projects or work that you do now because you know overcoming difficulties this, this is what we all need to hear these stories because we all go through challenges as well and you know it, it's interesting when you're on the stage and you were saying how there was a bully who you know there must be more of the story there as well who shouted out something about your weight deliberately to hurt you because words do hurt you and remember growing up uh, there was a little saying that we used to say uh, say in school was that sticks and stones may break my bones, but words can never hurt me. But in actual fact, words can hurt you a lot, can't they? Absolutely. Yeah. What helped you to get over that difficult experience? I just started to surround myself with some mentors and some um, people that were there to help me thrive and break you know, raise me up. I, one of my uh, mentors is uh, an Inuit elder. I call her my, um, my, well, she's my soul sister, but my life coach. And I see, you know, she's a few years older than me. And, um, but I see what she's gone through and I see the impact that she's made in her community. And she's just there. I, I, she's really significant in my life because I guess she's the one who said, what are you waiting for? What are you, you know, you have all of these passions and these desires and what are you waiting for? And this happened, but let that be a sign to you that, you know, not, it's not going to hold you back. It's going to move you forward. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I think surrounding myself and finding um, uh, actively pursuing people that would help to rise me up. And so I can rise others up as well, but being in that kind of community, uh, of, of especially women, but even men, I have uh, some men mentors as well. And uh, just allowing, uh, allowing myself to be open, open to suggestions and open to uh, like getting through that, that really tough barrier that you put up and breaking it down before you can actually move forward. Cause that can be a tough period. It can either that, or that barrier can be so tough, we can't break it down, or we don't allow ourselves to be strong enough to break it down, or we break it down with all our might, and we become stronger on the other side. Mm -hmm. And so I'm really blessed that I, you know, it ended up being, (laughs) being the latter, and I was able to get to get through that. And now I look back at that experience. And um, I mean, I'm lucky because my bully has since uh, apologized for those moments. Um, you know, growing up is, is a good thing to do. So I'm, I'm really happy about that. But I, I would not do it any differently because I know that we have to go through those times in order to appreciate and maybe, maybe even find ourselves. So, um, yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't change anything that happened. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so certainly when you have those challenging times, it gives you those periods of growth as well, because either you're going to succumb to it or you're going to think, look, I've really got to do something about it. And it's very hard for us to do things on our own and actually reaching out and finding a mentor and having the people who would be our advocates and supporters to say, yes, you can, you can do it. You know, you're, you're better than you think you are, because as women, we all and men as well, we all have that self-limiting belief and it tends to hold us back and, you know, that it's on our shoulder and say, oh, you can't do that or you're not good enough or you don't have the experience or, you know, you're too old or you're too young or you're, you know, you've got brown hair, you've got blonde hair. (laughs) There's there's always something that we can find as an excuse that will hold us back, yes? Now, you have overcome all of this to become terrifically successful, especially on this platform that I too love very much, LinkedIn. And so tell me about Linked Express, Shelley. So Linked Express is really to educate people on um, how to build their story. So some people call it a profile. I haven't called it a profile for quite a while. It's really your career story. And um, to really make that um, the most important story you'll ever write, the story of you. So how can, you know, I help people achieve that. Uh, and also not only, you know, working with the, the story itself, but then how do we get that story uh, recognized? How do people find our book in, you know, in a lot of books? So how do we, you know, how, it's all about like standing out and not fitting in. 
So I really uh, make a conscious effort to uh, educate people and not only educate them on how to build their profiles, but also how to experience LinkedIn life because lurkers are often lonely. And so <laughs> I call them the lonely lurkers. And there are a lot of lurkers out there and not really benefiting from what LinkedIn has to offer. And so I just feel that I'm a champion who can get out there and actually and hopefully bring people to the other side. And when I am able to do that, um, it's the most amazing feeling because then that gives people an additional uh, tool to put in their toolbox. And so I'm always trying to build up toolboxes. Yeah, I think the more tools that we have to be able to uh, create the life that we deserve and hope for and the career that we deserve and hope for as well, the better. And and ever since LinkedIn has just grown exponentially, I mean, over 560 million members globally and in Australia alone, it's 10 million. I don't know how many in, in Canada now, but you know, every, every second there are two people who sign up for LinkedIn and being the lonely lurkers, I like that word, okay, the LinkedIn lonely lurkers <laughs> that, could, that could be a club in itself couldn't it <laughs> the people who just just are on it but not leveraging it it's such a shame because it's a free platform it's there you can really brand yourself well can't you and and it's such a joy when you see someone with a great profile and you've got an amazing profile Shelley I really really like it the images that you have in your cover cover image are are fantastic that the cape is there <laughs> okay so if anyone wants to find Shelley have a look for the cape in her cover image it's excellent and and so now how does linked express um help people specifically what are your services that you offer so i tend to do more group um group coaching at the moment uh because i am at the university as well i work with uh I work at uh, the business school at University of Toronto and I'm helping them not only with uh, career development, but also helping them to uh, advance in terms of their digital footprint. So I'm pretty busy there, but I do, uh, but I do a lot of group and executive coaching and a lot for women's groups because I know in the, in the consulting and banking world, there are a lot of strong, strong women associations and being able to go in and talk with them about uh, leading online uh, is really what I like to do. So I think Linked Express and LinkedIn and High Heels um, are, the, are, are meant to be kind of like uh, a way to kind of advance people. Uh, and LinkedIn and High Heels mainly for women. Although I've had men sit in because uh, there are the men that want to support the women in their organization. So I've been pretty happy about that as well. Mm, oh, it's wonderful. And and it must feel so rewarding for you. What What is it that you enjoy the most about the work that you do? Well, for LinkedIn and High Heels, I think my story uh, with the red shoe really resonates with people because whether it's, you know, that type of bullying or some other type of bullying or some other, um, you know, type of adversity that we've had to come through. I think people resonate with my story. And so that makes me feel like I'm doing something by sharing my story. Because it's not easy to share a story um, like that, because it brings me back to that time sometimes. But I know that going back to that time is important as well, because it, it keeps me aware of how far I've come. And even though I'm a forward thinker, I'm also very big on reflection because it pushes me to become better and better and to go back and see my successes. So um, I think that that's really important. So when I get to speak in front of a group or do LinkedIn training, um, LinkedIn trainer, I, I like what it is but I don't think it tells everything about what I do. So when I call myself a LinkedIn trainer, it, it's limited a little bit because I'm actually, uh, I feel I'm a LinkedIn champion. I'm an empowerment person. I'm, I'm this because I use LinkedIn as an empowerment tool. Um, so every time you're filling in a section 
or you're building your story or you're adding something or you're doing your own background photo. It's, it's something you're doing for yourself. And when I see people cross that LinkedIn barrier and actually feel like, wow, I'm connecting and I, and I, I've added something and I've got this accomplishment and I've done this and I've done that. And I now have a community and I now have support. I, I, it fills my soul. Like my soul is like bursting. (laughs) It's so beautiful. And, and it's so true because LinkedIn is all about connections. It's, It's not about selling. It's about making connections. It's about networking authentically. And, you know, there's just something that sometimes I feel that, there are people on LinkedIn who just want to connect, connect, connect with lots and lots of people, and they don't personalize anything. And I think that's such a shame because, you know, when you go to an event and you shake hands with someone and you look them in the eye and say, hello, what a pleasure to meet you. And, you know, tell me a little bit about yourself. And then you have a good chat and you get to know each other. That's really lovely. And then if you can continue to connect afterwards, that's great. But on LinkedIn, sometimes there are people who simply connect for the numbers and the numbers are not what's important it's the connection the genuine connection and getting to know someone that's important isn't it absolutely I don't think that since 2010 I have sent out a connection request that has not been authentic Mm. I really or like customized or personalized I'm a big believer in um, the so there's a few things that I really hold uh, very dear to my heart when it comes to LinkedIn. One, personalization and customization. Two, the art of reciprocity, because it is an art, but it's, you know, I believe in the art of reciprocity offline, and I believe in the art of reciprocity online. And it's really funny at University of Toronto, but um, a few times I've been in a class with a professor who is um, a reciprocity um, he's a reciprocity guru and he'll take the reciprocity offline and I'll do the reciprocity online. And I realize that if you don't start off building your relationships in the right way, it will never get to that point uh, or you will have to wait a while to build it. But if you start off by introducing, telling your why, and then, you know, supporting the people that come your way, um, reciprocity will exist and it will come without there even being much work involved. Mm. I agree with you a hundred percent. And actually this is how we got to know each other in the first place. (laughs) Reciprocity, which is so lovely. I've shared my book with you. You've, you've been um, highlighting my career coaching abilities. You're so generous with um, your connection and also generous with with your support of other people as well. I mean, you truly are a, a LinkedIn superwoman and, and I'm very, very lucky to have had you on the show. So now, Shelley, I could talk to you every day, honestly, and I could talk to you all day. And I hope that next time I visit Canada, I will get to go to Toronto and to actually meet you face to face and take this online connection offline, as we do with um, our LinkedIn local Sydney events as well. And you're in Involved with LinkedIn Local in Canada as well, aren't you? Yes, the LinkedIn Local and uh, Toronto and Greater uh, GTA is is really popular. Um, it's flying. <laughs> in fact, <laughs> I've spoken at probably about six of them already. Uh, so it's amazing what LinkedIn Locals do, and I'm constantly watching what's going on in Sydney and your LinkedIn Locals, and I'm like, oh, I would love to be there at one point. Oh, but please come, come and visit us. It would well, be great. <laughs> and if you're ever in Toronto, uh, there's definitely a place for you, and we'll we'll have a LinkedIn latte, and we'll and hopefully there'll be a LinkedIn Local going on at the same time because they're quite frequent, they're quite popular, and so many relationships have been able to you know um come offline for a bit and that's been really really nice yeah aren't we lucky i mean linkedin has just spawned an incredible community now i just want to let people know where they can find you okay so let me put on my glasses and now they can find you at linked express yes and you are also 
linked express and you are also on twitter and it's elsliger s Yes. yes. And in my show notes at janejacksoncoach.com, I'm going to have a number of links where you can find Shelly as well so that you can reach out and connect with her and find out all the amazing things that this lady with the red shoe can do. <laughs> so thank you so much for your time today, Shelly. It's been an absolute pleasure and I'll talk to you again in a few months. If you enjoyed this podcast, look for Your Career Podcast on iTunes and leave a review. And for all the career management support you need to create your dream career, visit janejacksoncoach.com and join my Careers Academy for live career webinars, group coaching, one-on-one coaching support, as well as my online career development courses. Isn't it time you found your dream job? You've been listening to Jane Jackson Careers. Sign up to receive regular career advice at janejacksoncoach.com.